Grocon owes creditors $60 million. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee, let's have a look at this article which is discussing, well, the collapse of Grocon, everyone. The fact that they owe creditors $60 million. Now, <clears throat> in the construction game, you will get, let's say, terms that vary from I've actually been paid early a few times from people to 90 days to sometimes even 120 days. Often you'll get, what is it? They need to receive an invoice or it'll be 30 days from next month as well, like no matter when you send the invoice. These are just the conditions that you get with some of these big builders because, well, it's easy, cheap credit for them. There you go. Now, 60 million bucks, that's a lot of money and I'm concerned with how many potential subbies are going to cop it because for me, I'm an architect, okay? My cost, uh, the computer equipment I have, my power bill rent and staff, which I've gotten rid of, and just, you know, that's it, pretty much. You know, stationary expenses. It's not too bad if someone doesn't pay me. It, it I feel it. I get annoyed. I get angry. The worst I've had is, a, is someone that stiffed me for 15 grand, you know, and I, I took it to QCAT. I won. I had a lawyer do all these things. It wasn't worth the energy and the effort. It's a little restaurant down in Rubino Town Center, by the way, so, you know, just... Ask me uh, in email. <laughs> no, I, I don't care. Well, I do, but I've moved on. But the thing is, <clears throat> it's not like, you know, they've taken my intellectual property. They've stolen, they haven't paid for it. Okay, that's part of life. Now, that's different to a subby. Say if you were doing tiling, say if you were doing plumbing or wiring, say if you were, you know, plastering or anything, you would have to pay for those materials, usually yourself, fund it yourself. Then you'd have to install it, fix it, and do it. So then once it's installed and fixed, it becomes the property of the owner of that project, it may, the, you know, the client, the end user. Now, if the builder between you as the subby and the client goes bust and doesn't pay you, you can't really go in there and pull it out, can you? Because that person has probably paid for it and owns it. It's just the builder that's done the dodge on you. And this is where it can get really messy and it can get heartbreaking. It really can. Some of them will play the game where they'll string out invoices so long try and get subbies to go under and sure they've got rules and legislations and all these things in place you know business bank accounts or construction all this stuff they try and set up still happens that's just the game everyone and it's frustrating it is it really is so i feel sorry for the subbies more than the consultants with regards to this but we've all we've all encountered it let, let us know in the comments your stories guys Guys, before we go through this of, you know, how much have you been stiffed on a job that you haven't been able to get back? And then how much have you managed to get back? There's one thing I didn't realize because <clears throat> I had this QCAT thing and then you have to go place it to court and do all these things. And I remember I was going to the courthouse and talking to someone there. I'd like to file this. And she said, oh, you need to do this, 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 and this, and this. And I'm going, oh boy, it'd be easier just to go to the bikies, wouldn't it? She did not laugh for a moment. I thought it was a brilliant joke. She just looked at me stone dead. And I realized later talking to a lawyer that all of that's actually recorded. <laughs> and I mean, even if you do, that, that's not, not a legitimate way because then they can still come back and take the money off you. So there you go. Guys. I had one mate, what he, I think a bus company owed him money. So he went and uh, smashed all the windows with a slingshot in the bus company. So... But then again, you're not getting your money there either. You're getting revenge and you're not getting the money back. So it kind of is not worth it either. I wouldn't advocate for that, guys. It's just a waste of energy. A waste of good ball bearings that you could have taken to the scrap metal to recycle. You're spending money on revenge. So let's, let's have a look at this. The company behind some of Australia's most iconic buildings owes creditors about $60 million. But could be saved from the brink if its legal battle over the central Barangawa, Barangaroo project in Sydney is successful. So they're pinning all their hopes on this. That's not what you want to hear. Uh, I guess it's, if you're a subby and you owe money, at least that's a light at the end of the tunnel. But that's not what you want to hear, is it? That it's all dependent on that. Office Tower and Residential Apartment Builder Grocon announced last week it would reluctantly appoint administrators. 66 years after the private group was founded by Chief Executive Daniel Grollo's grandfather, Luigi. Um, Cordamenta Restructuring was on Friday appointed administrators to 39 Grocon Group companies, 
but not those associated with its ongoing project, the Ribbon Development in Sydney and Northumberland Development in Collingwood. We understand that these projects will continue while the future of the GROCON group is decided, Administrator Andrew Knight said. Well, that's some good news for those people on those jobs. Make sure you're getting paid. Make sure you're getting paid early. I'd be asking for that up front. Also, the GROCON companies that are embroiled in litigation with the New South Wales government over its handling of the central Barangaroo project are not in administration and remain under Mr. Grollo's control. Grocon alleges rival Lend Lease and Crown Resources reached a secret deal with the state government on building heights last year, protecting the rights of the Crown Towers, now Sydney's tallest building, to unobstructed views of the harbour. Oh, you can see that happening, can't you? That killed off Grocon's plans to build smaller commercial and residential towers nearby. Grocon is seeking compensation for lost profits in the project that could be anything between 60 million and 270 million. If successful, creditors would be paid in full, Mr. Grollo said, and the company could be revived. But do you want to be doing business with a company that gets this close to the wire, everyone? Mr. Grollo alleges infrastructure in New South Wales was aware for years that the dispute over the views would torpedo Grocon's proposals, but withheld the information and instead continually confirmed the height the company could build the commercial and residential towers. He said the reassurances led to, to Grocon continuing to invest in the project. I can so see that happening. I can so see bureaucrats just lying, lying to people's face. Can you see that happening, guys? 100%. Grocon said, it was forced to vest its development rights in a fire sale to fellow consortium member Aqualand six years after it began, pour, began pouring money in. The matter has been listed for the New South Wales Supreme Court on December 4th, while the first meeting of creditors will be held the following week on December 9th. Grocon's future would be decided at the second meeting, likely mid to late December, the administrator said. Our priority is to assess the business and begin to work towards finding the best outcome for all stakeholders, Mr. Knight said. So there we have it, everyone. There we have it. Some potentially dodgy dealings from the New South Wales government and bureaucrats hiding information from Grocon. What do you reckon? Do you think that could possibly, possibly happen in, in an Australian council? In an Australian state? Australian bureaucrats? Never. <laughs> what do you reckon, guys? Let, let me know your opinion, your take on that one in the comments below. But uh, regardless, they're still sitting at $60 million owed to creditors. That's going to be tough for some people. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it will work out for the creditors. They will get their money back. I'm hoping you're not going to have any small family businesses caught up in this mess. And at least it's encouraging that the business, that the projects that are underway are continuing to go move ahead. Let's hope that actually happens. But how would you feel if you're working on one of these jobs? Are you going to be full of confidence that you're dealing with this big legitimate business that's going to keep going? Or are you concerned that, okay, they're falling over left, right and center. I need to get paid now. <laughs> I need to, you know, I need my money this week. Not 90 days, not 120 days. We'll have to see. So guys, this is definitely one to keep an eye on. Let me know if you know anyone who's copped this. You know, are you owed money by Grocom? When do you expect to be paid? You know, have you installed a lot in their projects? And what's the most that you've missed out on? But more encouragingly, what is the most that you got back? And a bonus question. <clears throat> have you ever actually managed to charge interest on a late payment? There you go. There, that, that's the prize. You get the gold, the gold star if you achieve that one, because I never have. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says or Teespring, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.